Good morning, students. Here we start with the individual lecture of the congenital anomalies of midgut and errors of rotation. So, therefore, congenital anomalies of midgut as well as errors of rotation. Please write this. This is an important topic and very interesting. So, dealing with the congenital anomalies of the midgut as well as the errors of rotation, here we come up with the first line diagram, very interesting. We will consider this in the form of a line diagram. This is the anterior abdominal wall. And this portion over here will be umbilicus. Inside, we are going to show that this will be the entire midgut loop. Now here, this is the entire midgut loop, which we are going to show. And this portion here is vitellointestinal duct. Here, what we need to show will be, this is the mid-gut loop. And this will be known as vitellointestinal duct. Now, please note down that the entire <coughs> vitellointestinal duct will disappear by 6th week. So, just before 6th week, this vitello intestinal duct will disappear. Normal development, normal embryological development. Sometimes in the congenital anomalies of the mid-gut, the entire vitello intestinal duct will remain patent. So, patent vitello intestinal duct. That means the vitello intestinal duct from the apex of the mid-gut loop till umbilical opening. This is known as patent vitello intestinal duct. This is the first congenital anomaly and in this cases, the material, the fecal matter, whatever is present in the midgut will pass through this patent vitello intestinal duct into the external surface of the umbilical opening of the fetus. And therefore, this anomaly is known as, please note down, this anomaly is known as umbilical fecal fistula, please note down umbilical fecal fistula these are often asked in one mark question answers or in mcqs what is umbilical fecal fistula the entire patent vitello intestinal duct so this is the umbilical fecal fistula now coming up with the here i'm going to draw the second congenital anomaly the same way we are going to discuss this the anterior abdominal wall and here this is the umbilical opening now here we are going to show that <coughs> The entire duct over here, this is the duct, that is the loop, mid-cut loop which we are going to show. And proximal part of mid-cut loop will show a dilated segment. Now the proximal part will show a dilated segment. In this case, the vitello intestinal duct has disappeared from the distal part. Only in the proximal part the vitello intestinal duct will persist. And therefore, this is a very important congenital anomaly in various paper styles in various universities. This is asked as an independent short knot, Meckel's diverticulum. So please note down, this is the second congenital anomaly which is known as Meckel's diverticulum. And this Meckel's diverticulum is also often asked in MCQs and one more question answer. What is Meckel's diverticulum? The persistent proximal part of vitello intestinal duct will be known as Meckel's diverticulum. This diverticulum will be, now please note down, it is 2 inches, 2 inches in <coughs> size. It will be 2 feet, the distance will be 2 feet, proximal to iliocecal junction. And this is present in 2% of population. These three marks, landmarks are very important. It is around 2 inches in size. It is present 2 feet proximal to iliocecal junction and it is present in 2% of population. The persistent proximal part of the vitello intestinal duct which is known as Meckel's diverticulum. Now this Meckel's diverticulum, if it is present, there will be other complications associated with this Meckel's diverticulum such as Persons having Meckel's diverticulum may show peritonitis or inflammation, that is peritonitis, or they may show 
there will be certain intestinal obstruction, certain loops of interest, intestine will be obstructed around this Meckel's diverticulum. So there may be other complications associated with Meckel's diverticulum. So please note down, this is the proximal part of the persistent vitello intestinal duct which will be known as Meckel's diverticulum. This is the second anomaly. Now coming to the third anomaly. We come on this side. Please come on this side. Third anomaly here. What will show will be, this is the anterior abdominal wall, this is the umbilical opening and here we are going to show, this will be the mid-cut loop of course and the entire vitello intestinal duct has disappeared except for the middle segment. <coughs> Only the vitello intestinal duct will be present in the middle part. And therefore, middle segment of vitello intestinal duct, when it is persistent, and the rest of the duct, proximal and distal part of the intestinal duct has disappeared. And these cases are known as enterocystoma. They are called enterocystoma. Only the middle segment of the vitello-intestinal duct is persistent. This is third congenital anomaly. Now here, fourth congenital anomaly, once again, the anterior abdominal wall. Very interesting. What will happen here is, now here we will draw this entire mid-cut loop. Now this is same mid-cut loop and over here, distal part will remain persistent. The distal part of the vitello intestinal duct will remain persistent. And as the distal part will remain persistent, slowly as the pressure is created in the abdominal cavity, what will happen will be, this distal part will be herniated outside the abdomen. So it will produce a swelling outside the abdomen in this way. I'll put an arrow here. So <coughs> therefore, <coughs> very sorry, the distal segment of vitro intestinal duct when it is persisting, as the abdominal cavity pressure increases, it will pressurize the distal segment to form a swelling, convex mass external to the umbilicus or present at the umbilicus. And this anomaly will be known as, please note down, raspberry swelling present at the umbilicus. So it is also known as raspberry red swelling present at the umbilicus. Nothing but it is the persistent distal segment of vitello intestinal duct. So these are the four congenital anomalies. Now coming up with the fifth congenital anomaly on this side, please come on this side, on the fifth congenital anomaly, simply this is many times asked in one mark question answer, this is known as exomphalos, please note down the spelling correctly, exomphalos or omphalosy, exomphalos or omphalosy, what is it? Now exomphalos or omphalosy, it is basically <coughs> non-returning of the entire mid-gut loop inside the abdominal cavity. That means non-reduction of physiological umbilical hernia. The entire mid-gut loop will not reduce through physiological umbilical hernia. That means the physiological umbilical hernia will be persistent. It will not reduce. So therefore the entire mid-gut loop and its contents will remain outside the abdominal cavity of the fetus. And it will be found in the form of a swelling outside the umbilical cavity of fetus. And the fetus that are born in this condition, that condition is known as exomphalos or omphalosy. That is non-reduction of physiological umbilical hernia. In one sentence it is known as non-reduction of physiological umbilical hernia. And now we come up with the last one, very interesting. This is the most important and very interesting. Here, errors of rotation. So the title given is errors of rotation. In the errors of rotation, we first consider the non-rotation. Now, this non-rotation is many times asked in one more question answer. What, what do you mean by non-rotation? What is non-rotation of the mid-cut loop? After my first stage, and what was the first stage of rotation of mid-cut loop? The 90 degrees rotation anti-clockwise. So, after the first stage of rotation, there will not be the further two stages of rotation. That means the entire mid-cut loop after the first stage of rotation will en mass enter inside the umbilical cavity of the fetus. That means the physiological umbilical hernia will be reduced only after the first stage. 
only after first 90 degrees of anti clockwise rotation. So, therefore, that is non rotation. In, in non rotation, that is the first sentence which you have to mention. And the second sentence in non-rotation will be, because of this, the entire small intestine will be located in the right half of abdominal cavity and the cecum and ascending column will be located on the left side of abdominal cavity. Please mention this. So, because of non-rotation, the entire small intestine in the right side of abdominal cavity and the cecum and ascending column in the left side of the abdominal cavity because of non-rotation. This is very important, often asked in one more question answer. This is the first error of rotation. Now the second error of rotation, I will write here, it is known as mal rotation or it is also known as reverse rotation, very important, reverse rotation. This is many times asked in one more question answer, what is reverse rotation or what is mal rotation. Now here, note down, try and understand, the cecum and ascending colon, as they are returning back in the abdominal cavity, they will return in abdominal cavity in such a way that they are going to return posterior to the superior mesenteric artery. So therefore, in the final stage, the entire cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon will be lying posterior to superior mesenteric artery and the third part of duodenum will lie anterior to superior mesenteric artery. So it will be the reverse, opposite situation than the normal. Therefore, such kind of rotation is called mal rotation or reverse rotation. Please note down, only two points are significant. In mal rotation or reverse rotation, the cecum and the transverse colon, ascending colon will lie where posterior to superior mesenteric artery. And second point will be, third part of duodenum will lie, where it will lie? anterior to superior mesenteric artery. So this is known as mal rotation or reverse rotation. Understand the difference between non-rotation and reverse rotation. So these are the two points of errors of rotation. And finally, there are certain anomalies related with fixation. Now, <coughs> during fixation, I'm very sorry, during fixation, the mesentery which is present in the pre-arterial segment, normal development in normal embryology during fixation of the intestine, of the colon, the pre-arterial segment of the mesentery will be developed into the mesentery and the post-arterial segment will be developing into the transverse mesocolon. Now here what will happen? During these fixation of the mesentery, what happens will be there may be errors in this fixation of the mesentery in the dorsal wall. And therefore, because of this, the cecum and ascending colon may be found in the subhepatic quadrant or they may lie in the right lumbar quadrant. These are the errors of fixation. Only two points. What are the errors of fixation of the colon? The errors of fixation of the colon will be the cecum and ascending colon may lie in the subhepatic region or the cecum and ascending colon may lie in the right lumbar region. Here we finish the errors of rotation. So therefore, now if you come, come on this side, please come on this side. We have finished the entire, the first was complete patent vitellointestinal duct, umbilical fecal fistula. Second one was only the proximal part of vitellointestinal duct was persisting, that was known as Meckel's diverticulum. Third was, there was, if you come on this side, middle part of Vitreal intestinal duct which was persisting, that was known as the enterosystema. Fourth was, distal segment of vitreal intestinal duct was persisting which was known as raspberry red tumor or raspberry red swelling. Fifth was, there was the entire non-reduction of physiological umbilical hernia which was known as exome follis or omphalocele. And sixth was, errors of rotation in which there is non-rotation and mal rotation or reverse rotation. And there is errors of fixation. So here we complete the entire errors of fixation as well as congenital anomalies of the mid -cut. Thank you very much.